Distinguished guests, Ken Dettelback, my friend, thank you for allowing us the privilege to stand before these very honorable folks, you veterans. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your service. My name is John Romero, and I do pastor a church here in town by the name of Ascent Bible Church. And this morning, my brother Chris and I are going to share a little story about my father and what he means to us. Um, my father growing up in Tsuki from Kaiomega originally, um, but he was such and has been such a blessing to us. So with that said, I'm going to introduce you to my brother Chris, who recently retired colonel from the U.S. Army. Thank you for your service, Chris. And, uh, and then I will come back and share a, a fascinating, awesome story that has just been recently revealed to me from my mom, who we have had the privilege, myself and my siblings, to take care of her since March after she came down with COVID. So all 10 of us, yes, 10 of us, um, have had the privilege of taking care of her 24-7 since March. And my goodness, it has been a blessing in my life as I have been able to hear some stories about my father that are so incredible. So with that said, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. First, uh, I would like to begin by acknowledging and thanking uh, Mr. Ken Dettelback of the Veterans Legacy Program for allowing my father's story to be told. I personally want to thank you, Ken, for this. Juan D. Romero entered active duty on 9 January 1951 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was first assigned to the 43rd Armored Infantry Battalion, 2nd Armored Div Division, as an armored reconnaissance tank cannoneer in Baumholder, Germany. He was awarded the Army of Occupation Medal for Germany, having been ordered to Germany for the three years of his enlisted service. However, on 3 January 1952, my dad volunteered for Korea, along with three buddies, and one of them being his childhood friend, Robert Yardman from Tosuki, New Mexico. My dad would tell the story that four of the, the four of them were challenged by a World War II sergeant to seek combat. And so he did. They volunteered for Korea, all four of them. My dad was assigned to the 7th Infantry Division as a heavy weapons infantryman, changing his military occupation specialty as it was required by the Army for volunteering for Korea. He was assigned to D Company, 32nd Infantry Regiment, 7th Infantry Division, while in the Far East Theater, earning the Army of Occupation Medal, Japan. The Korean Service Medal with two Bronze Service Stars, the United Nations Service Medal, And the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, United Nations Service Medal and the National Defense Medal. My father also earned the combat, the coveted combat infantry badge for satisfactory performance of duty in combat, in ground combat against the enemy, engaging the enemy along what is now known the, de the demilitarized zone in the vicinity of Port Chalk Hill. I had the honor to see this battle area when my Korean counterpart, Colonel Lee, escorted me to the area while I was assigned to United States Forces Korea in 1918 and 19, uh, 2020 and 2019. Thank you, Colonel Lee. I would personally want to thank my friend, Colonel Lee, my, uh, my friend, for allowing that to happen. My wife and I raised three children in Kansas City, Missouri. When my son Andrew was a child, and who, by the way, is a uh, third year a uh, third-year student at the uh, United States Naval Academy. Uh, he and I would take the 45-minute drive to Fort Leavenworth on Memorial Day to go specifically visit grave sites of fallen Vietnam soldiers. I wanted my son to appreciate the full measure of devotion these soldiers gave us as a family. You see, my wife was born in Vietnam. And when she was seven years old, her mother put her on a boat along with seven siblings, one being an infant, while her father became trapped and left behind. My wife and her family left their country as boat people for a better hope, the United States of America. 
On the fateful day of April 30th, 1975, when Saigon fell to the North Vietnamese Communists, she left on that boat. So I want to thank my Vietnam era brothers and sisters for your devotion and giving that hope to my wife and my family and my children. The reason I speak of my sons and I Memorial Day visits to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas is because one year, as we were walking along a row of grave sites, I recognized a Korean soldier killed in action 9 October 1952, which, at this, which was the time frame that my father was in country. However, the more distinctive piece of information that from that beautiful white grave marker was the inscription, 35th Infantry Regiment, 7th Infantry Division, Korea, my dad's regiment. I called him and said, Dad, Andrew and I located a grave marker that says Willie Fellows Jr., Arkansas, Private, 32nd Infantry, 7th Infantry Division, Purple Heart, killed 9 October 1952. My dad's immediate response, yes, Hito, I knew him. I remember that date, 9 October, the date he was killed. I volunteered to go recover him. He was killed outside of friendly, force, friendly lines. We couldn't recover him for two days. He had to, we had to wait for things to settle down. I was in awe that I connected this gravesite in Leavenworth, Kansas to my father and what my father did there as a 19-year-old young man in 1952. Willie Fellows was 20 years old at the time of his death. He was born September 9, 1932. My father was born in 1933. He was one year older than my father. My father, once again, a volunteer which reminds me of that famous scripture in the book of Isaiah, which says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. My father's service to the nation and community did not end after the war. He continued, it continued in peacetime, as war will always shape the peace, as my brother will now describe. Thank you, Chris. I, uh, I hold in my hand a document that was kept in my mother's house for years that uh, we now cherish as a family. Documents that we have been discovering uh, ever since he passed in 2013. And now that a lot of us are spending uh, some really cool quality time with my mother, um, man, we're hearing stories um, that are just phenomenal, that are just touching my heart and reminding me of um, what you all represent, what today is about. And this document is titled, An Affidavit of Certificate of Consent. And uh, this is a document that my dad was required to get approved by his mother so that he could join and be a part of this great country's military at the young or ripe old age of 17. So he joined up early and desired to do nothing more than to serve this great nation of ours as a 17 year old. And uh, what was really interesting about this document, there's a gentleman's name by the name of Tomas Trujillo who we, nobody really knew what the whole story was about, so we asked her, who is this guy? And she shared with us that this was a gentleman whose house was used on Upper Bishop's Lodge to gather the community's mail. So he shows up on the document so that when the mail or the U.S. military would approve his service for him to join the military, this is where the record showed up. Now, what was really interesting, this is where the mail ended up for everybody that lived in that part of Bishop's Lodge. My dad goes on, as Chris shared with you, to do a tour in Germany and then volunteered for Korea. And I began and I asked my mom, so how did you guys stay connected during that whole time that he was gone. 
And she shared with me how he continually would send her letters and reminded her as often as he could how much he loved her and couldn't wait to come home. And so much was that desire, so strong was that desire to come home that when he finally got a return and was stationed in Korea, I mean in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, after returning from Korea, the very first thing he did as soon as he dropped off his duffel bag was he bought a ring and he hitched back to Santa Fe to give my mother her ring, an engagement ring. And she was so thrilled and so excited to see him after all these years and she pulled out a box filled with his letters and he shared with her and she shared with him how it was those letters that continue to give him the hope to stay alive in the midst of a war and just have that desire to come home. They obviously got married a couple of years later, had 10 kids, mind you, and here we stand just grateful and honored to be in his to be a part of his family where he began to serve his community, whether it was in Tezuki or even around Santa Fe, and became a real testimony for us. As I have several brothers that joined the military, they were in law enforcement, four of them, sisters that are involved in the legal field and in the medical field, and just so grateful for his service and your service. I want to leave you with the final thought. That just like those letters from my father and the reciprocated letters from my mother back to him is what gave him that desire to stay alive. Gave him that hope. These love letters between two people. And please don't forget ever that God has left you and I a love letter. It's called his word. And I pray that it's a reminder each and every day of God's love for us and all that he gave so that we could experience days like today. Thank you again so much on behalf of my family. Thank you for all you do, you service members. We're so grateful and um, we honor you this day. Thank you and God bless.